welcome back to another installment of Michaela Reads Percy Jackson for the first time and is so surprised by how unhinged it is, but like in the best way possible. I'm so excited to be starting book two today, The Sea of Monsters. I'm going to make a prediction for what I think will happen in this book. Um, I think that they are going to cross a sea of monsters. Okay, let's begin. I'm so excited. Grover's in a wedding dress. The unhinged vibes continue to remain unmatched. No, but I, I get the nightmare, Percy. I also have nightmares that all my friends are getting married and I'm forever alone. Oh wait, that's real life. I like Tyson. It says he cries a lot and is scared of everything. Same bestie. I jump when the toaster pops. I have to mentally like prepare myself when I make toast. I don't know why I just admitted that to the internet, but in a bath! Her coming in, making an entrance, punching a guy in the nose. I could not, I could not have written a better entrance for her. She's an icon. She's a queen. She is the moment. Kip is in danger. No. I, I was ready to take a nice, relaxing s'more break. I was, this book already has too much excitement in it. I needed, I needed some scenes of, of them just sitting and, and making arts and crafts and, and eating s'mores. Oh, let me rest! I really like how this fight at camp shows how much Percy has really grown as a warrior since book one. I love seeing him in action, fighting, just his, his heroic self. It's really, it's really fun to see that, that sort of growth. Oh, Tyson is a baby Cyclops. That's cu cute, I guess. Our baby Cyclops is cute. Tantalus. 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 Bro can't eat? That's like my worst nightmare. Tyson is Percy's brother. Okay, this is, we're getting to, we're, this is like soap opera family drama happening right now. Okay. Tyson's saying, it's okay, I will be a good monster. Hold on, I, j I need to, I need to, oh my gosh. I mean, I feel like this line is really representative of a theme that I really like in Percy Jackson, which is this idea of people sort of not being what you expect. Um, Tyson looking like a monster, but not being a monster. You have Luke, who looks trustworthy and was secretly working with a villain. Yeah, I'm still not over that betrayal. I'm still not over it. Reese and Percy and everyone fighting over this quest is so funny to me because like, if that were me, I'd be like, you could have it. You can have it. I don't want to die. Take it. Good. Is your quest. Oh, no, thank you. You must leave immediately. No, 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 thank you. Now, I know, a strange guy in the middle of the night, common sense, I was supposed to run away, yell for help. Yes, Percy, yes, you should. But the guy acted so calm about the whole thing that I found it hard to be afraid. Again, they desperately need stranger danger lessons at Camp Half-Blood. Oh, it's Hermes. Okay, man is finally making an appearance. Um, let's see where Luke's daddy issues come from. Oh my god, I look... I just read a hundred pages in one setting, and that might not be a lot for you, but that's a lot for me. I'm a really slow reader. I've just been sitting here. The sun is going down. Oh, I really want to keep reading, but I should probably go eat food. Oh, in honor of Tantalus, I will go eat food. I hate that guy, by the way. I hate him. Percy, Annabeth said, we have to do the quest. We'll get expelled, you know. <laughs> it's giving, um, it's Hermione coded. Or worse, expelled. That was a really bad British accent. Ah! Luke! I didn't expect to see him. <gasps> oh my gosh. I do love the nuance that um, Luke is getting. I feel like some villains can be very one dimensional. Like they're just bad. That's it. Period. They're just bad, which is fine. I don't think every villain needs a tragic backstory. Sometimes people are just bad, but I, I really like how they are giving Luke nuance here. Um, I think a villain who doesn't know they're a villain, a villain who thinks they're doing the right thing is a lot more realistic and frankly scarier than a regular, just plain old evil antagonist. There are spies at camp. Who's gonna give me more trust issues this time? I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna happen because I read Song of Achilles and I know Chiron's Greek mythology backstory. He's one of the few that I know from that book. But Chiron did suspiciously have to leave. And now Luke has information. Don't want to point any fingers, but... Speaking of Song of Achilles, I have some book recommendations for all the people out there that read Percy Jackson as a kid and are now looking for something that has a similar vibe as an adult. I 
got you covered. I'm so excited to partner with Spotify because all three books I'm going to recommend are available on audiobooks on Spotify. And if you have a premium subscription, you can get all these audiobooks included already with your subscription, which I love because I have my bookshelf is full and I don't want to spend more money on books. The first book I'm going to talk about, obviously, is Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book is so tragic and so heart-wrenching, but what I love about it is that it is a sort of modern retelling of the original myth. Second book, also by Madeline Miller, is Circe. I actually read this book first and then I listened to the audiobook on Spotify. This book has such beautiful prose. It feels like reading a poem and when I listened to the audiobook I actually really could like fully appreciate the poetry of the prose. It is so beautifully written. Now I know you're thinking Michaela how can you be like these are Percy Jackson style books for adults and not give us anything that's a little bit too spicy. I don't know I just did that accent. This is Neon Gods. I listened to this audiobook on Spotify as well. This is a modern retelling of the Hades and Persephone story and when I say modern I don't mean a modern retelling as in retelling it through a modern lens like the Madeline Miller books. I mean that this sort of really blends modern society and the Greek myth. So it's it's similar to Percy Jackson in that respect. Like I said, all three books are included with Spotify Premium, so if you end up reading them, let me know. Let me know what you think, and okay, let's get back to Luke's daddy issues now. Okay, I talked about them not recognizing the monsters in the first book, kind of stressing me out, and, and I'm sorry, I'll say it again. I'll say it again here, because Percy, monster donut? Really? A wild Clarice appears. I was wondering if she was going to make an appearance. Honestly, I well, well, I kind of like her. I, I, in like a girl boss way. I don't know. I don't forgive her for bullying my son Percy, but like, she's on a quest. She got no friends. She's only got her muscles and daddy issues to guide her. Does anyone in this book not have daddy issues? I guess Annabeth has mommy issues. No, but she also has daddy issues. Wow, okay, I just read that scene with Clarice where she's talking to Aries, and um, I think this is another example of the really good nuance that this book is giving its characters, because Clarice isn't just like a cookie cutter school bully. You can see her behavior stems from having an abusive dad who is also the god of war. And, 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 and it's also another example of these books having almost, almost unexpected serious moments. No, Tyson! No! What? Oh man, this book is killing characters early in the game. I did not expect that. I did not expect just like, you introduce a character and then oh, halfway through the book, R.I.B. I liked him. Oh, we're getting prophecy information, okay. All right, that is a lot to take in. He might destroy the world, he might not. He's either gonna save it or destroy it. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's not cool like for him but I think the idea of a, of a hero that either is gonna destroy the world or save the world, I think, that's, I think that's a cool idea. Stay safe though, Percy. Okay, so they are going into this spa and normally I would be complaining about them falling into yet another monster trap. Um, I'm easily stressed, okay? Like I said, I get jump scared by toasters. Stop walking into traps. But um, if someone came up to me and said, hey, I can magically make you hot, I too, I too would throw caution to the wind. Percy just turned into a guinea pig. What the f This book continues to be the most unhinged thing I've ever read, and I love it. Oh, Cersei. Oh, see, see, Cer okay, I get it. I actually, that, it went right over my head. And I read that book, I read, um, Cersei, I, I like I know that myth. I should have seen that coming. Okay, I guess I can't complain about like Percy not seeing that coming because I, I didn't either. Okay, I've been reading this book so fast. I don't think I've ever read a book as fast in my life. Um, I'm so in, like, I can't put this down. Um, I actually, I read a little bit off camera. I'm sorry, I couldn't wait. And I just read the part where Annabeth it, wants to hear the siren. And um, first of all, Will someone please get that girl a therapist? Will someone please protect this child? And secondly, Annabeth's siren song being her parents and Luke like happy and wanting her there. I'm not gonna lie, can it, can it, make, can it make me wanna cry a little bit? I totally do not get over emotional about fictional characters. I've never, do, never done that in my entire life. Okay, so this whole thing with um, Grover and Polly polyphemous, I don't ever pronounce any of these words. I'm thinking he's a lady cyclops and the wedding dress and and all, all of this, it's it's all very, very funny. But um, I, I also want to talk about how it's really showing Grover's intelligence. Because of course the whole thing where he's tricking him and, and then he's like, don't, don't eat me raw, I have a good recipe. 
I, you you want to put some spices on me? Season your food. I, I mean, I, I just love how it's showing how Grover's intelligence, I feel like, is honestly a bit underrated. Like, I feel like there's, there's a tendency to look at characters who are nice and think they're naive, but I really like how this is showing Grover is very intelligent and he's he has a lot of experience and he's good at outsmarting monsters. Clarice and Percy and Grover and the gang working together. I really love that. I love that. She she deserves a redemption arc. Percy is refusing to kill the Cyclops. He's so good. Uh, again, this idea of nuance for the villains. I love it. And I, I think it's interesting because I, I feel like we almost see a shift here because I don't recall Percy being hesitant to kill any monsters or very strongly hesitant to kill any monsters in book one. And, and we really see him growing and we see his worldview changing. And I think one of the things that I felt, uh, this is going into another book series, but one of the things I felt a certain way about when I read a, a series of unfortunate events was that um, the characters in each book felt the same. And I think that was an intentional choice. I'm not saying that was a bad choice, but I, I do prefer series where it doesn't feel so stagnant, where there's like very clear growth from one book to the next. <gasps> yeah, Tyson! Yes! Oh my god, had me in the first half, not gonna lie. Pulled another Sally Jackson on me. I should have seen that coming. I really, I don't know why I didn't see that coming. Got me again, Rick. If a character ever does die for real in this book, like, I, I am now going to be distraught because I'm now gonna be like, oh, but, no, but they're coming back, right? Like, they're coming back. They're gonna, they're gonna be back in a few chapters. They're gonna be fine. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to handle it if that ever happens. Very respectfully, I think Percy should have killed the monster. I love that it shows like his heroism and his character. But like, if that were me, if you're trying to kill me, like, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. I am like, I am reading this book nonstop. I've just been sitting here reading this book all day. I had to go down and get dinner and I'm back now. So I'm gonna keep reading. This Percy Luke fight, it is not good for my blood pressure. It is, wow, okay. I, ha! But I really like how this Percy Luke interaction really was a chance for Percy to show off his intelligence because obviously he's not gonna be able to outsword Luke. Luke is years more experienced than him, but giving Percy that chance to outsmart him, I, I loved seeing that. I loved seeing him sort of be able to win that victory against Luke, at least by clearing Chiron's name, by using his intelligence. I think that was really fun to see. Ooh, Chiron, he's back. Chiron for the win. I knew he wasn't secretly a spy. <laughs> Who said that? Not me, not me. I trusted him the whole time. <laughs> Luke gave me trust issues. Monsters never die. They are reborn from the chaos that is always bubbling underneath civilization. The very stuff that makes Kronos stronger. They must be defeated again and again, kept at bay. Heroes embody that struggle. You fight the battles humanity must win every generation in order to stay human. I really like this. I like this idea that you can never truly defeat evil, that you can, that you need heroes every generation to keep the evil at bay. I feel like with some stories, it feels very much like there's just this one evil, and when you defeat that one evil, it's done. The world is good again. This idea that it's a continuous battle, I think, is a really interesting one, and I think it's a really realistic one. The Titan Kronos is my father? <gasps> Chiron is Luke Skywalker. I didn't see that coming. I don't know if I was supposed to see that coming. I don't know if that's like a common knowledge thing in Greek mythology, but that was a big plot twist for me. <laughs> and Hermes is back. I really like Hermes. I, well, I, I mean, I don't, like, I don't know if I, like, not that I like him personally, but I like, I like him as a character. I think he's doing a great job of being a counterbalance to um, Luke's feelings about the gods and about their role as parents. It's a situation that is very much morally gray. The gods are on the side against Kronos. Kronos is obviously very bad, but they have also inflicted a lot of harm upon their children. And they have unintentionally contributed to Kronos's rise through that harm that they've inflicted on their children through people like Lou. Yet at the same time, Hermes serves this purpose of showing that they're not all intentionally trying to be bad parents. And the impact doesn't change, but it does put the heroes in the situation where everything is not completely black and white. Because on the one hand you have Luke that really gives into that anger he feels at his father and it compels him to fight with the evil side because he's so convinced that because the gods have been bad that the evil side who opposes the gods must be good. That is the logic he tricks himself into thinking. And then you have Percy who is in a very similar yet altogether different situation where he is very clearly fighting on the side of the gods. You know, Poseidon has shown 
some amount of interest and care for him, yet at the same time, now he sees that maybe not all monsters are monsters. Of course, Tyson, but that applies to everyone, his enemies and his friends. And maybe he's not even the hero he seems. He learns that maybe he's going to destroy the world. And what do you do in a situation like that where there is so much gray area, where you, you don't know what's good and what's bad and what's right and what's wrong? And I love that the book sort of raises this question because I think the best stories, they don't give you answers, they ask you questions. And the, this Percy Jackson book has done that very well. It's raised a lot of questions in my mind and I, I love books that do that. Sally Jackson, I missed my mother. I'm glad she made a little appearance at the end. Oh, oh, Thalia. Okay, I, I, I genuinely did not see that coming at all. I know there was the whole thing like with the tree being poisoned. I, okay, wait, wait, this is the end. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, time for book three. No, I'm kidding, I need to sleep. I cannot believe how fast I read this book. I read this book in like two days. I never read a book in two days. Like I said, I'm a very slow reader. It's just one of those books that one, I, you know, I mean, I couldn't put it down obviously, but I think it just sort of feels very much like a journey. I wanna keep going on it. I wanna find out what happens next. And I, I love books like that. Wow. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me while I cry over Percy Jackson. Thank you for recommending these books to me. This has been quite the journey. I will try to continue vlogging my reactions. So um, hopefully I will be able to post all of these and we can kind of read the books together, which has been really fun. So yeah, thanks so much for joining me on this adventure. Oh, on this quest. Thanks for joining me on this quest. Haha. -ha.